Call the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Chairman, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr Chairman. I do want to talk to part six uh, of the bill, which is clauses uh, 101, 102 and 103. Uh, the, the substantive, the, the, the bigger part of it is uh, clause 102, and it's likely that there will be uh, a, a reasonable amount of uh, focus there. Uh, these are, of course, amendments to the Stamp, duties, Stamp and Check Duties uh, Act uh, 1971, uh, something which in 1971 uh, was more, much more important uh, at that stage. Um, uh, stamp, stamp, and <laughs> stamp and check duties uh, than it is uh, than it is currently, because that was a, a method of um, both, I think, uh, revenue collection, uh, but also uh, it, it was a it was a policy tool. It was an intervention uh, that was used to head the economy in, uh, in particular uh, directions, and I think it's fair to say that that continued through till about 1984. Um, but there have been, um, since 1971, uh, a, a number of changes. There have been, there's been a lot of work uh, in the area of, for example, da double tax uh, agreements. Uh, and, um, and, and what the focus is on this particular, in this particular clause uh, is on the approved issuer levy uh, and the effect um, on, on amendments to the, uh, or, or the pay, or what's liable for um, uh, stamp and, and check duty uh, of, of that. Um, uh, in in, in our clause um, in, within 102 86i uh, new uh, subclause 2, uh, it indicates that despite the NRWT rules, a payment of interest under a registered security is treated as paid by an approved issuer only to the extent where the approved issuer levy in relation to the security is paid by or on behalf. Uh, of the approved issuer, and I just wanted to ask the minister and the chair why is that the case? Um, I would I, I would have thought uh, there was an obligation uh, to pay it, to, to, to have it paid in full. And whether and whether there is, and I, I, I know that it's not the minister's. Um, you know, I know the minister is not the primary, you know, the, not the primary minister in charge of stamp duty and in and, and, and related matters. But I wonder w about the question of the liability for the part that hasn't been paid, uh, where there's an issuer levy which should have been paid but hasn't been paid, um, whether there is still an obligation for stamp and, tech, and, and, stamp and check duty in that particular case. And I'm, you know, I'm, I don't mind if there's a nod or a wink uh, from, the, uh, uh, from, the, from the minister to indicate um, what, what, the, what the particular approach is, because I, I would have, I, I, of course I prefer for her to take a a call on this matter, Mr Chairman, but, but, it, but it's a serious question. If, 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 there's an issuer, if there's an issuer levy that hasn't been paid, that should have been paid, uh, is there still a liability uh, for the taxation on that? Because, um, you know, of course, if someone has uh, income which hasn't yet been received, uh, under our accrual systems, of course, uh, the tax is payable on it. Uh, it's not payable on, you know, we've moved away uh, in days since uh, I think um, uh, the chair was involved in some of these matters um, uh, and, and uh, we don't work entirely on a receipts and payments basis now. Uh, we, we, we have an accrual system and we work on the basis of, of income and expenditure. But it appears that there is some reversion uh, to a receipts and payments approach um, rather than having an accrual system uh, and, and income and expenditure in this particular case, I just wanted to know: am I, you know, is that an accurate characterisation uh, of of what is occurring here? Is this something that is new? Is this something which uh, has been here? Because you can't you can't tell looking at the amendment and, and, and looking back uh, whether whether or not uh, that is the case. Um, and, and then going to uh, to clause uh, 102. Uh, of the bill um, uh, going to 86I, I think. I, I, I might correct myself, Mr Chairman, I might have said 86I earlier. It's 86I. Um, I probably need to put my glasses on. Um, uh, Subclause 2B, uh, uh, which goes to 
the amount of the levy based on the levyable value of the registered security at the time of the payment of the interest is paid uh, is set out, uh, the rate set out in section uh, 86J. Uh, and Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman. I call Michael Woodhouse. Oh, Mr Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I move.